My daily driver is the MacBook Pro, but I do need a Linux machine and I need a Windows machine. And this Dell XPS 15 with a 13th generation Intel chip is the perfect thing for me. I really love this machine, not sponsored or anything. I bought this thing with my own cash. I already put Linux on it, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's not like you flip a switch and suddenly you have Linux on it, not like WSL for Windows. By the way, if you wanna see how to do that, I have a full walkthrough on how to set up a Windows environment for development. I'll link to that down below. But this is not that. This is Linux dual booted with Windows. So now I can boot into Linux or boot into Windows and it'll be running on metal. So let's go through it, shall we? First things first, First, need one of these. It's a thumb drive. I don't have any USB-C ones, so I also need one of these. Because the new Dells only have USB-C connections. You want to make sure you format that thing so it's nice and clean. Head over to the Ubuntu website and download whatever version you want. I went with 22.04 LTS, which means long-term support. This version is going to be around for at least a little bit. You're going to use the ISO file because that's the image. Then you're going to use a program called Rufus. Go to the Rufus website, download it. Don't worry, it's pretty safe, at least as far as I know. This will allow you to make that thumb drive bootable so you can boot right into Linux. Now, if you're going to be installing Linux and you want Linux to have some space on your hard drive or SSD, you're going to need to make some space for it. So in Windows, we're going to make some space by adjusting a partition. Go to create and format disk partitions in your control panel. So this will bring up disk management and it'll list all the partitions this big one, the C drive, this is the one we're gonna shrink. Yeah, you need to shrink it so that you can make space for Linux. So in this box, you're gonna enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. Let's go with uh, 80,000, ah, screw it. Let's go with 100,000 and click shrink. You can do whatever amount you want, but now I have 100 gigabyte unallocated space here. That should be plenty for my Linux needs. And my main C drive is now 831 gigabytes, which is plenty for what my Windows needs are. Don't do anything else here, just exit and reboot. Okay, I'm restarting it. Listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't understand what's going on in there that's making it freak out like that. Gotta press F2 during the Dell logo sign. Oh, I missed it. Ugh. Dell logo, F2. This gets you right into the BIOS. We need to go to boot configuration and then make sure that Eufy is selected. So the boot sequence is gonna be Windows Boot Manager, then Eufy. If I may interject here, uh, the boot sequence should be Eufy then a Windows boot manager. Otherwise, it'll boot right into Windows. I'll come back and fix this in a bit. Okay, then there's one more thing here. It says enable secure boot. Let's turn that off. Let's save this configuration. All right, now unfortunately I got this error message. It says BitLocker recovery. Either you need to re-enable secure boot or disable BitLocker for Windows to start normally. Oh boy. So right now I'm being asked for my BitLocker recovery key. And it gives me the Microsoft address to go to to figure that out. As a side note, I'm gonna keep some of the mistakes I'm making in this video so that you can see what mistakes I made so you don't make them. Hey, that's, that's helpful, right? I've entered this very ridiculously long recovery key, which I had to manually enter. The recovery key is correct, restart. Hey, I'm back at Windows. Go sign? I don't know yet. Clearly we're not booting yet into our device. Maybe I just need to reorder these uh, boot sequence things. Let's put our SanDisk up on top and save this. See? I told you. And success! Well, almost. Not quite there yet, but at least we have our grub menu here. Try or install Ubuntu. That's what we need. Let's do that one. All right. Getting some weird messages here, <laughs> but it says Ubuntu right there. It's booting up. It's pretty slow right now because reading things off of that slow drive. Ta-da, first signs of life. All right, so here we get an option. Do we want to try it or do we want to install it? And we want to install it. English, continue. You need at least eight gigabytes disk space to install Ubuntu. This computer has only eight gigabytes. What? What happened there? Let's click on try. Well, it boots right up, and we can now use Ubuntu here. But of course, it's running off of that SanDisk, so it's not going to be very fast. 
here I am trying to start Firefox and uh, it's taking its time okay so we're in Ubuntu in Firefox there's a little icon that says install so let's try clicking on that poke around until it's done right okay and now it says install English yes it's complaining about the disk space so I'm gonna search for something called gparted it's a little program that allows me to make partitions looks like we're only seeing one partition here instead of all the ones we're supposed to be seeing all right we're back in the bios because under the storage settings we have raid on selected and raid on is for windows it does not always work with linux so we need to select ahci to have linux compatibility so let's do that and we'll restart now just a little bit of a warning here once you select ahci which is actually a newer standard your windows boot is no longer going to work because windows is looking for that raid partition well don't worry about this i mean i hope you back your stuff up but <laughs> just in case you should always back your stuff up However, this is something we're going to fix a little bit later once we get Ubuntu working. Okay, that worked. After setting storage to AHCI and rebooting, Linux now recognizes that there's more space and it sees all the volumes available now. We can now continue with the installation. I'm going to select normal. You can also select minimal if you want to, but I want the whole experience. And to make sure you check install third-party drivers too. Here I'm going to pick something else because I want to make sure we're installing on the correct partition. Continue. Okay, now it sees all of them. This free space one, that's the one that we just created in Windows. I have to use this 100 gigabytes and I have to use it wisely, which means, well, it's going to need partition space for the swap and it's going to need partition space for the main drive. So we're going to need to create two partitions out of this free space. We're going to do it inside Linux. So I'm going to select the free space, click on the little plus here, and I'm going to give it uh, 16 gigabytes for the swap. Now that's a lot. I'm gonna give it eight gigabytes for the swap. Might still be a lot, but whatever. Here from the use as, I'm gonna select swap area and click okay. Okay, good, right there. Let's reselect free space, click plus again, and the rest of it, 96,000 uh, megabytes, is going to be ext journaling file system. And the mount point is gonna be forward slash. Click okay. I think we should be good to go. Let's install now. And it's doing the installation part. That only took about two minutes, so let's restart. This, this is, this is where the fun begins. So now that I've restarted, my grub says Ubuntu, and here's Windows, but I think Windows is just not gonna work. I'm also gonna unplug this to make sure that I can go into Ubuntu without having that plugged in. Let's just test to make sure Ubuntu works. Here's the moment of truth. It's booting up. <laughs> All right, you ready to go. Ubuntu installed. Now, how about them Windows? Um, yeah, we need to fix that. I'm going to restart and I'm going to go into Windows Boot Manager. Uh-oh. Well, it's doing the BitLocker thing again. I'm going to press Escape here. Yeah, let's try to skip this drive and continue to Windows 11. I know, I know, that doesn't make any sense because we were trying to boot from that drive, but let's try it. Yep, doesn't work. Well, I've entered that really, really, really long recovery key and let's see if that helps. It looks like it's gonna boot into Windows, but I still don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, yeah, inaccessible boot device. This is that problem I was talking about with the radon. We need to fix that. Windows doesn't work, so now we need to go back into the BIOS, go back to storage, switch it from AHCI back to Radon. Now, if we do this, then Linux is not gonna work. So what are we gonna do? It's like catch-22 here. Well, don't worry, there's a solution. Here, I'll show you. It's a lot of fun, I tell you. Not really. Let's just check Ubuntu to make sure if it's working or not. I don't think it's gonna work this time. Ubuntu, I should say, not Ubuntu. Yep, it does not work, missing module. It's basically given up. Time to reboot. We're gonna boot into Windows now. And we need that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, here we go. Back in Windows. It lives. Okay, so now we gotta reboot Windows in safe mode so we can install that AHCI driver. To get into safe mode, open up system configuration, go to the boot tab and select safe boot. Click okay and restart the machine. 
Now we're gonna be sneaky. At the next boot up, I'm gonna load up BIOS again. And under storage, I'm gonna to switch to AHCI again. Save it and reboot. And this should allow Windows to automatically load up the drivers that we need. Hey, we're in AHCI and Windows booted. Look at that. Now we're in safe mode, so we're gonna turn off safe mode. So configuration again, boot, turn off safe boot. Actually under general, we could just go to normal startup. Press OK and yes, restart. Hey, look at that. Windows, back to normal. Or is it? Yes, we're in Windows. Now let's just make sure that we still can get into Ubuntu. So I'm gonna restart Windows, or restart my machine. I should get the grub menu, come on. I get the grub menu and select Ubuntu this time. And now I'm in Ubuntu. And that, my friends, is the roundabout way of getting a dual boot system on a Dell XPS 15. We're done. Well, that was uh, fun. Not really, I'd rather be using it than doing all that. But now that it's done, stay tuned for some more benchmarks and some more tests. I'm gonna be comparing the Linux machine with the Windows machine with my Mac and maybe another Mac and maybe some other Macs. Uh, so stay tuned, subscribe. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if there's any particular tests you wanna see on the Linux machine, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.